Hi, Mark Rubin. Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. This is a 2.4 meter project. Now, spoiler alert, this is going to feel like the last episode. And in fact, it is the last episode in which I'm going to have any personal involvement with the boat. From here on out, the customer is going to take it away and he's going to finish up the last little details. But before he can do that, we need to flip it over and finish a few last details ourselves. So why don't you sit back and relax, let me take care of the work. I got my extra grippy gloves. <laughs> so, I like this little uh, extra arrangement. Yes. The bolt. Okay, okay. Yeah, well I figured we had that drain since we had the drain here anyway, and I remember the one critical moment last time was when this wanted to go dipsy doodle yes. on us all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, I clockwise guess... or anti clockwise? I was wondering about that. I was thinking because of the orientation of yes. this grabber, that yes. maybe going that way I is, so. is probably the way to sense go. To me. Yep. Okay. And that way all of our jumping around is on this side of the boat too, where these straps okay. are. So how did we do it before? I'm trying to remember. Oh, okay. So start by lifting the sand and you take up on that slack. So sure. just pulling up on it. Okay. okay. Right about there, because we got the, this kayak in the way up here too. Yes, okay. Okay, now let me get this out of the way. Now, okay. Okay, go up on that one. Now this is where things could go sideways on us, tipsy flies. Maybe I'll there. Just a little yeah. bit. That was the part. Okay. okay, and now we'll get this out. Yes. So you want to do a six meter next? <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm just going to rotate it. Yeah. In the sling. Yeah. Okay. Line on one end, one to the other. So I think what we might have to do is go mm -hmm. get it started. Okay. And, have and to then lift. I think we got to come up a little ways. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we, the biggest worry is that it's sliding off of that. Yeah. So far, so good. Slack off on that side. Yeah. So that's that way. And that was very handy to have that. <laughs> so far, so good. Of course, I'm worried about abrasion as we go here. Insurance. <laughs> I like lots of insurance. Yes. I hate paying for insurance. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, paying but for insurance. But when insurance is as free as a little piece of rope, I am. Paying for insurance oh. actually doesn't do anything. No, it's it collecting on it. It doesn't prevent, it doesn't prevent anything. No. You want me to get this up to the tent? Um, or do you want to go across like oh, that? Oh, I didn't want to do that. So. We're upright. Okay, and it looks great. So, so what are you thinking about? The water line looks good. What are you thinking about the the varnish that's on? Looks good. The deck? Looks fine. You sure? It's a boat. Okay. It's not because it's a little bit. It's, it's a little bit of a fuzz right along the shear line where the two. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I think it's uh, you know it's it's not a piece of furniture. It's boat. It's going to be sailed. Guess what? It's going to touch the dock. It's going to touch other things. Okay. That's how. That's like the nice thing is about varnish work. You can touch it up. Yeah. That's one of, the, one of the good reasons for bright work. Okie dokie, okay? 
We're done? We're done. We're done. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We got her done. That is a weight off my mind getting this finally flipped back over. I'm really happy with how things have turned out. There's of course some little details that I would like to see done a little bit better, but you know what? It's all time, 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 time. And ultimately it's up to my customer to decide when we are good enough. And as far as he's concerned, everything looks beautiful. Just a few more details to finish up. And uh, mostly it's like an assembly line process and there's very little to assemble. You know, this boat is really quite simple for the most part. Now, I'm not gonna be doing any of the rigging on this project. It's outside of my comfort zone. And frankly, somebody else will do a better job of it than I will, I think. So I'm just going over the last little bits and pieces we need to put into the boat. I got some hardware here that is for tensioning the, the shrouds because they can slack off. So you got this little lever here. It fits onto these little tracks and these little tracks go onto these bits of blocking, which then fit onto the blocking we already put in the boat. And the customer decided we should just leave these alone because I think he wants to play around with exactly where they go or they might change them up a little bit. So we're going to do nothing about these for now. We're just leaving them to the side, but I've pulled out the appropriate hardware for putting them together. So I will throw in an extra screw. Just drop those together in the bag. So there we go. That's for them. Uh, I've got some little fair leads here that the shrouds go through, so we still need to put those in. So uh, we've got the main holes drilled through the deck already that the body of them goes through. So I've got this builder's plate here that I made. So it's uh, etched brass. We'll just install that with a couple of scooching pins. Just a little tiny tang for the back stay, so we can put that on. I made an epoxy uh, pocket into the wood that's pre-threaded from this very bolt or a similar one. So that'll go on. And we got our quadrant hardware that needs to get a couple holes drilled to allow the, um, the line to go through. So we'll tackle that. Through hull fitting, we gotta glue that in somehow. I think we'll probably just use some seal, a little bit of bead of sealant around the outside edge here, I think. And then the hose that goes onto this will hold it on the inside. So that's all that's gonna get. There's this gusher pump that's gonna go underneath our um, our console. I'm gonna let the customer worry about putting that on, but I should probably dig out some hardware for him to, to go with that. So we'll do that too. The last thing we have to do here is the uh, foot pedals. This is our track for our mast step. So that goes on there. They'll, they all get screwed down onto the mast step together. I guess this goes, yeah, goes that way. So just two tracks of aluminum. And I, and I made them like this just because I didn't have a piece of channel to use. So I just stacked them together and that will work fine. And then we've got these, uh, this is for the, the foot pedal for the rudder. So we've got to chop some bolts down to fit on here. And then we've got to make some foot pedals. So we've got sort of a quick and dirty pattern here. These are gonna get fastened on here like so. That's about all there is to it. Oh, a little little loop for our um, hatch string. Okay, and of course we have the rudder to install with that gear. Just gonna give this a nice coating of grease. This is a marine anti-corrosion grease. It doesn't really need it for lubrication. It's more to keep the stainless steel from going rusty on us. Spacer, you can practically hold it on there as it is. You 
looks like I should trim this key down. So maybe I'll do that. Okay. Go with that. Good. And we have to put stops on here that stop this at about that angle, but we'll do that on the lines, I think. Put little lugs on the lines to control that. Beautiful. Earlier in the building process, I installed this machine screw into the transom blocking using epoxy. It's kind of creating an epoxy anchor. We'll just clean up these threads a little tiny bit and we'll use a dab of bedding compound onto the machine screw holding the backstay in place. This doesn't look like much, but we've looked at the existing boats and they're not using anything any heavier than this, and they've proven to last just fine. These little plastic and stainless steel fair leads are going to protect the deck from chafing from the shrouds. I've installed a little piece of G10 below the deck and the holes pass through those. They're giving the screw something to bite into. And we'll just dab a little bit of varnish into these holes just to make sure everything is sealed up before we install the hardware. Okay, here comes one of the scary parts. We've got to drill a hole through our hull. So we've got this tube here. This is going to be for our bilge drain. And basically we'll just slip a hose on there and put a clamp on it. So it's got to go through the hull. I've made this little wooden fairing block that's just going to uh, give this more meat because I don't want to have this tube resting on just the planking itself. So I want to beef that up. So that's going to slip through from the outside. It'll be basically like this. It'll give us a nice bit of meat to drop a hose onto and allow for our bilge drain uh, to work, our, our bilge pump. And so I'm going to install this pretty close to this bulkhead, a little bit below the top of it, and that's where my customer asked it to be. So we'll stick it right about there. And I think what I'll do is I'll drill this hole, and then I'll use the, I think I'll use the tube itself to align these two parts while I glue this guy in. So we'll wax up the tube, so that it doesn't stick and we'll slide it in there with some adhesive in behind it so it bonds itself in place there. So all I want right now is basically a, a, just a center point that I can use to put a pilot hole in there. So there's the top of my sub deck. I think we'll put it right about there. That looks about right. That plank line kind of divides it, makes it look a little more presentable. Just going to eyeball where center might be. Okay. So we're just going to use a small pilot drill here to give us a pilot hole to follow with our Forstner bit. I always use pilot holes when I'm drilling with a Forstner bit, um, but one of the main reasons I'm doing that from here is I want to drill this from the outside. I'll, in fact, give myself just a little turn here on the inside just to clean up that surface, but ultimately I want to drill from the outside.
So that's going to help prevent breakout from happening on the inside here. I'll go a little bit deeper. Okay, but now I'm going to come from the outside. All right, so here we go with drilling this hole. Yes, this makes me nervous as hell. Just about there. Whew. Nervous making. So that'll go through there. Got to clean up my hole a little bit with some sandpaper. Go and it's back beveled a little bit so that the uh, tube here has got a little bit of a radius on the inside and it gives us some room to put a bit of bedding compound around it. And that looks great. Nice and tidy. Looks good on the inside. So now I just got to get this glued in place like so. I thought I would show you how I go about making my builder's plates. I do all my design for them using some software here. I'm using uh, Adobe Illustrator knockoff Affinity Designer. To make this work we print on glossy paper so just like any junky shiny magazine paper works well and I'm just using a laser printer. We load that sucker in there and I've already figured out that I want my document at 60% scale relative to the drawing I've created. So we're just going to print that out. There we go. That looks okay. And I always try and print out more than one because sometimes your first shot at transferring them doesn't work. We drop that on there. Now this is the important part. We're going to use a little rubber printer's brayer. And the trick is to get this rolled down without moving it around. It's kind of gluing itself down here. Some modest pressure with the roller just to try and push that toner down onto the plate. So now I just take this off and I put it down somewhere else to cool. I let that fully cool before I mess with it. Okay, over here at the laundry sink, we just take the cool plate, put on some water here. It helps it get a little bit warm. I don't want it hot because I don't want that ink to soften up. And then we just do this. I could make your toothbrush maybe. Just very gently just scrubbing away at that. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically wear the paper away. Okay, whenever I'm messing around with the acid, I always put on a full face shield so my vocals might sound a bit weird. I wear heavy rubber gloves. And this acid is one part muriatic acid and two parts hydrogen peroxide. And into this we put this uh, bubbler. So this is a uh, like a fish tank bubbler right here. And so this is just to make sure that our um, part is being agitated and oxygen is being introduced to the acid. So I hold this down with, oh, stay in there. clamp on that and then here we got our plate 
We've got it sitting in a water bath on a hot plate, and this is just, just warming it up slightly. I just want this sort of like, um, you know, like 75 degrees or something like a, a good a warm room temperature. I've got this guy sitting just below the surface of the, of the acid, just suspended there upside down, so face down. Fire up the bubbler. I used this the other day, half an hour gave me a fairly light etch. I think I'm gonna go a little longer. Okay, so this has been in oh, about an hour and a half, roughly. Just stop the bubble in here. Stop the bubble in. Yeah, it's not a super deep etch, but it'll do. Okay, here's our finished plate. It's ready to go into uh, another acid bath. I'd say that came out looking pretty good. Degenerated a little bit around some of the edges, but I, that's okay, I like that. I think that's gonna come out well, and there's a bit of pitting around the edge here. I don't mind that either. So we're gonna be using this Jax uh, Brown and Black Brass and Bronze Copper Darkener. Yeah, I'm gonna dilute this a little bit just to, because of the volume. I don't have an exact number here. So put a little bit of that in. We're gonna throw in a little bit of water. that slosh around a little bit. And then we'll just drop that in there. Here, here's our, our keel flange. Now this is bonded in really well. And we've got our lifting tabs here. These are through bolts going right underneath the flange. There's nuts on the ends. It's all gobbed up with epoxy. That's not going anywhere. And we might put a little uh, webbing on here that allows you to sort of hook onto it at the, at the center. We haven't decided exactly how we're gonna do that. But the floor lifts out easily enough. The real trick now is actually we need to come up with ways of dealing with the um, the bilge pump and the hoses and everything like that. But uh, that's going to be down the road. And I'm not sure if we'll get to a videos about that, but we'll sh certainly show you the results once it's all said and done. Okay, so we've got our floor panel here. And that just drops in. Real simple. Yeah. Cleats hold it in there in position. Just some real simple wooden pedals for controlling the rudder. We're not putting a ton of time into these. Um, there's always the chance that these, this configuration isn't quite right and they need to change it. So sort of do the bare minimum. And uh, if it works great, and if it doesn't work out, well, make another set. There's the pedals. That looks pretty good. And now it's the console. This pump will go on underneath the console and the handle will get oriented one way or the other, but I'm gonna leave that to the customer to play around with because he might want to shift it to one side or the other. 
I don't want to interfere with the rigging activities by taking a guess at it. So we'll just leave that the way it is for now. Got to have a, got to have a good gusher pump. Lastly, we have our seat. And it just has these little tabs that drop into slots in the sole. And I think that seat worked out so well. I'm so happy about that. Let's not forget our hatch here. So we've got our little string that we pull. And that releases our hatch mechanism. There we go. It's a, it's a little bit of a tight fit, but we don't have to open it all the time. So I'm happy about that. That worked out really well. There's our quadrant back here. Of course, we're going to get steering lines that come around. And any water that leaks through the deck and through the seam here is just going to flow right through to the to the bilge where the bilge pump will pick it up. So we're not going to bother with trying to seal this up. There's no real need to do that. The amount of water that will sneak through this joint is really minimal. This is still a little bit sticky just right now because of the layers of varnish that's going to wear in. Reach inside. Go. That's a pretty snug fit. I'm super happy about that. It has been like a good solid year since this boat got started here in the workshop and I for one I'm happy to see it finally go. I got other projects to move on to. Not that I don't enjoy having the boat around. I certainly enjoyed the process although you know obviously you've all seen some of the headaches have had along the way but you know they've all been surmountable. None of them have been disastrous. Uh, some of them have taken a little bit more time than I would have liked them to but that's just the way it goes. That's boat building. There's always going to be something that takes longer than you think it will. All right, just a little quick review of the dolly here. So um, we had a local welder throw this thing together and uh, it's sort of, it's not this, it's quite different than the dollies the rest of these boats use. The rest of them have got sort of this awkward situation where they kind of have a, a balance point right under the keel and they got to kind of play around with rocking the boat back and forth to get it to sit just so. But anyhow, uh, I think this is going to work out well. My customer came up with this idea of using this little chalk down here that's just to s stop the keel uh, from moving forward and it just locates the boat on the dolly. So they drop this down on it onto it with a crane. And of course, we just got a simple yoke up forward here. Um, it's got aluminum inside and what we did was we just used some fire hose to create a sling that's going to cushion the bow. I wish this was a little further back, just below the water line. That would have been, that would have been better. And maybe they'll modify this in the future. But for now, that's what we've got. And we've just used a couple eye bolts through this uh, piece of tubing here that locate this thing in place. So that works pretty good. Gives us some adjustability, and we're just at the top of the range, unfortunately. And back here, I'm not real happy with this. We've got some big foam pads that of course are kind of gluing themselves to the, to the paint finish. Um, I don't think this is going to be a good long-term solution. I'm thinking we might have to get some little saddles welded on here or something like that that can grab the boat below the, 
the bilge would be a better solution rather than having them hanging up here. Because right now, you couldn't put a coat of varnish on this thing without, these, without this stuff getting in the way. And that would be a nice thing to be able to go down and re-varnish the boat without a lot of fuss. So for that reason as well, I think it would be a good idea to move these out of the way. And um, it certainly rolls around easily enough. Whether it rolls around easily on the dock is a whole other question, but <laughs> that's not for me to worry about. But anyhow, with the boat on the trailer, that means this is ready to leave the workshop and I am ready to start my next boat. So while it's been really nice having this here and I appreciate having the opportunity to build this boat, it is time for it to go and move on to the next job. And that is just life as a boat builder. Let's take her home. To time to go. Time to go. Time to go. <laughs> You know, it's the brain work. <laughs> Looks good. Still working on a name. No, that lure looks really fantastic out here. I think I might just put it in the living room. It's not a terrible idea. So there we are. I tell you, you know, it's so nice seeing it out of my workshop <laughs> <laughs> and into someone else's. Well, it's been but there for a while. It has. I'm actually looking forward to seeing this thing when it's actually sort of out in the wild. Oh yes. Oh yes. Because just right now, That's I was like, I was struck for. by like, wow, there's like, I, I can see this thing for the first time, like really stand back and mm -hmm. have a proper look at it. and. Uh, and, I really like it. And I look at it not in the uh, way of looking at it too. I gotta do this. Uh, yeah, exactly. That. That's just, exactly it. Just to Hi, Leona. view. Really exciting. Wow, what a beauty. Mark, you've done a wonderful job. Thank you. Yes. It, she is lovely. Mm. Just lovely. As soon as you figure out the name. <laughs> I just want to thank all of you for watching, for subscribing, for commenting, and especially want to thank all of you on Patreon who've been making monthly pledges that help financially support this channel. That's really, really important and it helps cover all the costs of the equipment that I need to purchase along the way and helps to feed the family a little bit too. So thank you all so much and I will see you later.